we have clear understanding of how to calculate the Laplace transform of a given time domain signal. We had a lot of discussion on this topic and we also solved many examples to understand the properties of Laplace transform and other important points. So if we have a time domain signal ft, then we can easily calculate its corresponding Laplace transform fs. And in this lecture, we are going to perform the opposite calculation. This means instead of having the time domain signal, we are having the Laplace transform and we will try to obtain the corresponding time domain signal. And as this process is inverse of calculation of Laplace transform, it is known as inverse Laplace transform. So we are having the Laplace transform and we will obtain the corresponding time domain signal. And like Laplace transform, we have the formula of inverse Laplace transform as well. So to calculate the time domain signal ft using the given Laplace transform, we will use the formula of inverse Laplace transform which is 1 over 2 pi j integration from sigma minus j infinity to sigma plus j infinity the Laplace transform fs multiplied to e power st ds. So this is the formula of inverse Laplace transform. But as I told you in the introduction lecture that we are not going to use this formula to calculate the inverse Laplace transform in this course. So what are the options to calculate ft using fs? We will try to break the given Laplace transform and have the combination of standard Laplace transforms. We already know many standard Laplace transforms and we will try to break the given Laplace transform using the properties and the partial fractions if required into combination of different known or you can say the standard Laplace transforms. And once we have this form, we can easily obtain the corresponding time domain signal ft. To understand this, let's take one example. In this example, we are having the Laplace transform fs equal to 10 multiplied to s plus 4 in numerator. And in denominator, we have s square multiplied to s plus 2 and we are supposed to calculate the corresponding time domain signal ft and we will not use the formula of inverse Laplace transform. So let's see how we can calculate the time domain signal ft. We are having fs and by using the partial fractions we can write fs equal to a over s square plus b over s plus c over s plus 2. Now don't ask me how I am writing this using the partial fractions because partial fractions are not in the scope of this particular course. It is the part of mathematics. So it is your responsibility to understand the basics of partial fractions first and then proceed with the inverse Laplace transform. So by using the partial fractions we can write fs like this and we know fs is equal to 10 s plus 4 divided by s square s plus 2. So in place of fs I will write 10 s plus 4 divided by s square s plus 2 and fs is equal to this so I will write a multiplied to s plus 2 plus b multiplied to s multiplied to s plus 2 plus c multiplied to s square divided by s square s plus 2. So I have not done something alien here. I have simply taken the LCM in the denominator and using that I have combined the three terms like this. And when you compare the left hand side 
with the right hand side you will find 10 multiplied to s plus 4 is equal to this a s plus 2 plus b s s plus 2 plus c s square and now it is our task to find out the three unknowns a b and c you can notice one thing here b is multiplied to s and c is multiplied to s square so if we put s equal to 0 this term and this term will become 0 and we will be able to calculate the constant a so let's put s equal to 0 here and we will have 10 multiplied to 0 plus 4 which is equal to 40 so on the left hand side we are going to get 40 and on the right hand side we will have a multiplied to 0 plus 2 which is equal to a multiplied to 2 and from here we are getting a is equal to 20 so we have obtained a it is equal to 20 and now we will put s equal to minus 2 because when you put s equal to minus 2 this term and this term will become 0 and we will be able to calculate constant c so let's put s equal to minus 2 we will have 20 on the left hand side and on the right hand side we will have c multiplied to 4 this is giving us c equal to 5 now we have two constants a and c now take any value of s and put in the equation put value of a value of c you will get b equal to minus 5 so we have all the three unknowns and now we can write our Laplace transform fs equal to a over s square a is equal to 20 so 20 over s square plus b over s but b is equal to minus 5 so we will have minus 5 over s plus c over s plus 2 c is equal to 5 so we have 5 over s plus 2 now it is very easy to obtain the time domain signal ft because we know the inverse Laplace transform of fs will give us ft and the inverse Laplace transform of 20 over s square will give us 20 multiplied to tut let's understand how we are getting 20 tut as the time domain signal of 20 over s square we know 1 over s square is the Laplace transform of a unit ramp signal RT and the unit ramp signal is equal to T UT and when you multiply 20 to 1 over S square you will have 20 over S square and according to the linearity property we also need to multiply 20 to the time domain signal so we have 20 T UT and 1 over S is having the time domain signal ut 1 over s and when 5 is multiplied to 1 over s we will have the corresponding time domain signal 5 ut negative sign will come here and similarly we will have 5 multiplied to e power minus 2t ut in this laplace transform you can see we are having s plus 2 instead of s and according to the time shifting property when we have s plus 2 we need to multiply e power minus 2t this is nothing new we have already done this thing many times in the previous lectures so you can see that ft is equal to 20t minus 5 plus 5 e power minus 2t ut is common so this is our answer I hope you now understand how to deal with inverse Laplace transform and don't forget to brush up your concepts of partial fractions. This is all for this lecture. See you in the next one.